Hey everyone, welcome back to Salesforce Mojo. Today we're going to be talking about expressions in B2B and D2C commerce. Well, we're going to be going over exactly what expressions are and how they can be used in commerce to really expedite your development or configuration of the platform. Now, just a sneak peek on this. This will allow you the ability to configure your page or create custom components with your commerce data without any Apex work. So if you're curious about how we actually can do that, stay tuned. We're going to jump right into it. So what are expressions? With expressions, you can make calculation and access property values and other data to pass in component attributes. So what this gives us is the ability to access data without doing a bunch of custom code. And we'll show this as we go throughout this video today, but it gives you some really powerful data in commerce to really show information on the page without having to create a bunch of complex custom components. So when it comes to commerce, what are we looking at here? What, what data do we have access to? We have data on a couple different pages. Number one is cart. We have some cart expressions. We have order expressions, product expressions, and search. And then underneath it, we have our general expressions that we can use across all these pages. But what this means is that on every single one of these pages within the commerce experience, we can use expressions to pull data about these records right into the page and into our own components without any custom apex to pull this information in. Okay, so there'll be two links that I'll drop in the video description down below if you wanna go check them out. Uh, but link number one here is using expressions in LWR sites. So again, this is the context of LWR, not the existing Aura site, uh, but it gives you a kind of a general what are expressions, how do you use expression syntax. It primarily goes over the general expressions that are available and how to data bind these into like for instance the HTML editor as you're seeing on the screen here uh, so you can go down you can see all of the the general item information here uh, which is a good context right in the um, in the context of how to use expressions but what's going to be more valuable for you is if you go over into the commerce side of help and training you'll find a section called expressions and commerce components and uh, it gives you a really good overview of all the different uh, pages that have data access on it and how to actually use these in text blocks. And we'll go through a couple of these today. Uh, but if you drop into the product uh, expressions here, it gives you a list of all of the product expressions that you have available to yourself. So let's take an example of the product. Let's say we have a product page or the description area that has something like this. We have the title, we have the SKU. I dropped another title in here just to give you an example. And then we have a price. Out of the box, we can do a couple of these things with the components, and I'll show this in a minute here, uh, but you can also extend this functionality and use it with expressions as well. So you can see that on here, we could pull in with expressions, both the title on both these sections here with this expression on the left-hand side, product details fields name. Now, if we were simply to change the last portion of this to stock keeping unit, which is the name for uh, SKU, we could pull in the SKU right below it. And then we could also pull in the list price here. You have to be a little bit careful with list price here because there is differences between list price and the price book entries and the price that the person has access to. Uh, but you could show you know, your own price and then you could show original price underneath it striked out if you wanted to be able to show the comparison. And you can do all this with just expressions instead of using Apex and pulling this information back uh, from the records yourself. So now that we've gone over a little bit of the what, how do we actually use expressions? Well, number one, you can use it across many different standard components. I listed a couple here that we'll go in today, uh, specifically the HTML and text ones, uh, but there are a lot of standard components that you can use expressions in. And commerce has a lot of components that are expression aware, so it's very easy to uh, use that information. And number two is custom components. You can use these expressions to feed your custom components to make it easier to do whatever you're trying to do. So with that being said, why don't we jump into number one here with standard components? All right, we're back in our Salesforce Mojo org here in our Tiny Homes LWR B2B storefront. We're going to start by clicking on Experience Builder here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll drop into the product page because that's what we're going to be doing our demo today. And you can see once we drop in here, we have a couple standard components that are already on the page here. We have our product details, our product variations, uh, product pricing information, uh, tiered discounts if those are applicable, and we have our product detail purchase options component here. 
But let's say that we wanted to add more. Let's say we added, wanted to add descriptions. Well, one of our options is we could come up to the product detail heading here and we could add field uh, and we could add in a product description right here. And that's pretty simple and straightforward. Let's say that we wanted it in a different spot though. Like right now, this is really tied to this main component up here. Uh, what we could do is go to the left-hand side and we could bring over our text uh, block right here. Let's say we want it at the very bottom, right underneath the add to cart so that you know people saw the add to cart first. We could come in here and you can see it says inherited content commerce product data. Uh, and so what that means is that we have that information available. So if we go into our text or expression, you can just click in here and the first thing it's gonna do, it's gonna show you all the information that we have from expressions before you can even start typing, uh, which I think is a really good uh, way to display this. And we can scroll down to whatever field we want or we can quick find in here by just starting to type in description because that's what we want. And it will find the description field in the pop-up uh, and we can click this. And you can see on the left-hand side over here, it's immediately pulled in the description for this product, the sample product that is that it's showing in the storefront uh, on the back end here. And it will dynamically update with whatever product you show uh, on the storefront. Uh, so we can go ahead and quickly do some styling. Let's say we want this to be a paragraph here and we want this to be uh, you know, centered or you know, left hand or whatever we wanted it to do here, vertical padding, horizontal padding, uh, and then we can close out of it. And now we have our product description, just as easy as that with expressions. Now, before, when we wanted to do it in a different spot than this, we would actually have to spend uh, quite a bit of time you know, pulling that information in through other means. So I think this makes it a lot easier to uh, really pull in fields where it's needed. And before we move over to uh, number two, which is gonna be on the custom component side, I wanted to just show how standard components can use this or are using it currently in also HTML components. So if we go back over onto the right side of our product page here, you can see as we hover over our product variations that by default, this is using expressions right here. It's using product.details and pulling in all the fields uh, based off of that to populate the variations. We can also go down to our product information, our product pricing information. If you scroll to the very bottom, you can see it has several attributes that are used uh, to bind data to this component. Uh, so this is a, actually a pretty good segue into our custom components because we can do things just like it's doing here where it's pulling in product.details, product.pricing, uh, tax and selective variants and use that information however we see fit in our custom components. But before we do that, one more real quick, let's go over into the left-hand side, let's pull over HTML editor here and drop it between the two of these. We can edit the markup here and we could go back over into our uh, product expressions over here, and let's say we want to pull in the external ID. Uh, you could pretty quickly do that by just dropping in, let's put it between the P tags here, and we'll save it. And now that information is going to be uh, available for us. Now, if you do it in the HTML editor like this, it will not show up until you publish and log in as a user. Um, so if it's simple as like just pulling in uh, simple text, I'd say do it in text block because you can actually visualize it quite a bit easier. Uh, but HTML editor is available to you if you needed to look and act and feel a very specific way for your brand. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the custom side of this. Uh, one of the ideas that I had in preparation for this was creating a custom component that allowed us to see a special offer on the product detail page if the product met certain dollar threshold. So the idea behind this was if the product is over $100 or $1,000, whatever it is, they would be able to see an offer that allowed them to apply a promotion directly to the cart. Now for today's component, it's not gonna be fully built out. It's gonna kind of be a, a mock uh, component, but the idea there is valid and the way we're using the expressions is valid. You would just need to keep building it out if you actually wanted that component to do uh, the full end-to-end -end life cycle. But with that being said, let's jump over into Visual Studio Code and we'll start on our HTML file here. And you can see that uh, this file is pretty straightforward. We're using a you know if true at the top to show the offer or not, depending on uh, some logic we'll show you here in a second. Um, and then on the left-hand side of this, we have what's called a slot. Let's see, I'm highlighting it right here. If you're not familiar with slots, you definitely wanna do a little bit of research on that. It's really powerful. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like here in a second, but uh, it, it does allow a lot of flexibility and components. And then down below, we have the uh, button that says accept offer. 
And as I mentioned, it's not a fully built out uh, solution here, so it doesn't have any you know, handling of the button actually being clicked or anything like that, uh, but the idea could be built out from there. Uh, and then as we go down to our metadata file, you have the top section, which is all the standard stuff you'd expect. It has the, you know, the label and it has the targets and the versions, uh, but the uh, targets down here are really where uh, it's really applicable for uh, this video. On the last one here, we have comparison price. And you can see our default is uh, actually an expression. Uh, so by default, this expression will be pulled in as a comparison price. You could make some updates to this. So it's using like list price, for instance, um, but then we also have kind of a static string, which is our threshold price. And the idea is that we're comparing the threshold price to the comparison price. Uh, and the comparison price is being pulled in using expressions, not needing any apex uh, to pull that information about the specific product we're on right now. So as we hop over into our JavaScript, the first thing I'll mention is this slot uh, at the top. If you are planning on using slots and planning on following this exactly, uh, you will need to declare the top so that the component knows that there is a slot available uh, that will be used. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second and why it's valuable. Uh, but moving down, we are declaring some of our variables at the top, very standard stuff. Uh, and the, the magic here is just if the comparison price is greater than or equal to the threshold price, we're going to show the offer. Otherwise, we're not going to. Um, and the last thing is if you plan on following this verbatim with what's in here, uh, you will need this uh, is in site preview function. Um, that basically checks to say, are we an experience builder or not? And if we are, show the component uh, because you will need to be able to uh, drop in your uh, text block into uh, your component. So with that quick overview of the component and feel free to pause and I'll, I'll drop this in the repo as well if you guys uh, want the raw uh, file here. Uh, but if we go over into our experience builder, uh, we can see that we have a new component called a product detail expressions that we can pull into any spot in uh, this section here. So I'm gonna pull it up right above the quantity add to cart. And uh, you can see right away that you have this dotted box that says offer text. That's your slot. So this is something that you could only do in LWR, not with the previous version of Aura, uh, but it gives you a ton of power because now we can slot stuff in right inside of our own component and make it that much more flexible. And what this gives us the ability to uh, do is drop any of our content components right into here. Uh, so for today, we're gonna use a text block and we can drop this right into the middle of the section here and we type our offer and says, you know, this product qualifies for the buy one, get one offer. Please click accept to add to your cart or something of that nature. And this is where, you know, you in a real life situation, you might uh, want this to be a little more dynamic than a, a static text here. Uh, but this we're keeping it simple just for the, the use of today. Uh, once, once we close out of here, you can see that now we have kind of a, a fully built out uh, little component here with just dragging and dropping the text in. And then we have an accept offer on the right hand side. Uh, let's get back to expressions here for a second, because expressions are the point of uh, the conversation today and you can see once we're in the product detail expression attributes this is where we're able to define the product pricing unit price uh, which is then pulled into our component and used at comparison uh, once we're done so that's really uh, how we've been able to make this uh, component here and uh, so far this is just a lightning web component no apex no apex classes um, uh, pretty flexible without having to do any of that so hopefully that's kind of a good demonstration for you on you know how you actually can use expressions to expedite your development of Lightning Web Components. Uh, I'd really encourage checking to see uh, what attributes are available before doing any custom Apex calls uh, because you can uh, do some quick things on the page uh, without much of that. So we're gonna wrap it up with that. Uh, hopefully that was a good demonstration of how expressions can be used. Uh, feel free to add any uh, comments into the video. Uh, if you wanna see more about expressions or more examples, or you want to maybe a more in depth on slots, uh, cause I did skim over that pretty quickly, but they're very powerful. Uh, thanks for watching, click the like button and have a good day.